Welcome to this five-part video series discussing important concepts related to installing SBM. In this part, we will look at the overview of the SBM architecture as well as different installation strategies. This is the architecture diagram for SBM and also includes a look at the components that make up the SBM system. There are three separate browser interfaces into SBM, as well as the Composer System Administrator applications, and of course there is a mobile client interface as well. These interfaces talk to the SBM servers where all of the components are installed. Some of the components run under Tomcat and others run under IIS. Each of those components then talk to the database using either JDBC or ODBC connection. As we start talking about the installation strategies, you will hear me talking a lot about the repository. Here is the repository component running under Tomcat. Let's take a look now at the different installation strategies. In a single server environment, the client machines talk to the SBM server, where the repository component as well as all the other SBM components are installed. The server then talks to the database. This is a very nice and simple setup. Another option is to split the Tomcat components and the IIS components to run on separate servers. Some customers have regulations that require Tomcat and IIS to be run on separate servers. For those customers, they run Tomcat components, including the repository component, on one server and the IIS components on a separate server. These two servers then talk with each other and to the database. Most of the client interfaces go through the IIS server, except Composer, which goes directly through Tomcat. In this variation, we have two separate SBM servers that are each running all of the SBM components, but this time there is a load balancer in front. Now the client machines will communicate with the load balancer, which will then spread the load between the two SBM servers. This is a popular setup for customers where having a failover system is important. This is because if one SBM server goes down, the load balancer will send all new activity to the other server that's still running. All the installation strategies we've seen so far have the same flaw. There is only one production environment and any changes must be made directly on that production system. If anything goes wrong, it will impact the production users. Instead of having only one production environment, the best practice that we recommend is to have at least two environments, one for testing and one production. This allows you to test configuration and design changes before making them live for the users. With this strategy, you would have a test SBM server that talks to the test SBM database and you will have a production SBM server that talks to the production SBM database. The most important aspect with this setup is that there is exactly one repository component and exactly one repository database table. We should probably pause here a moment to talk about the function of the repository. The repository holds all of the design elements that have been deployed to each server environment. As design changes are made in Composer and deployed, a copy is placed in the repository and the repository pushes them out to an environment, usually the test environment. After the changes are tested and validated, you can then promote the changes from the test environment out to the production environment. It is the repository's job to keep all the changes and deployments organized. You could run the repository component and database on a third system, like it shows in this diagram, but most customers do not do this. As far as CPU and memory usage goes, the repository is very small. It does not need its own server. Instead, it is most common to bundle the repository in with one of the other environments. 
About half of our customers choose to run the repository component on the test server and place the repository database tables inside the test database. In my opinion, upgrades are a little easier if the repository is running on the test server. There are also customers that have regulations saying that because the repository component will write to the production server, it must run on a production server. For those customers, they will run the repository component and the database on the production servers. In the end, it does not matter where you run the repository component or where the repository database is stored. There is no right or wrong answer. The only important part is that you have exactly one repository component and exactly one repository database. The last installation strategy I wanted to look at is the multi-environment with a load balancer concept. Notice here we have a test environment and a production environment. Most customers will only keep a load balancer for the production server, but you can do the same for your test server too. Just as with the load balancer diagram we looked at earlier, in this example you will have two SPM servers. The clients go through the load balancer and are redirected to one of the two servers. The same concepts with the repository apply here too. You could install the repository component and tables on the test environment or the production environment. It does not matter which one you choose as long as there is exactly one repository component and exactly one repository table. If you would like to read more about the SBM architecture or components or installation strategies, check out the online installation guide at docs.microfocus.com. On the SBM page, go under Installation, Overview, SBM Architecture. This will show you the diagram and give more information about each component. Also, under the Installation Consideration section, there is more information about setting up a single server environment or a multi server environment. In our next part, we will talk about how to prepare the server and the database for the SBM installation. Mm -hmm.